Productions. Our guest today is Aras Azadian, CEO and co-founder of Avocado Inc. Aras, welcome. You are in Toronto. You have uh, been traveling a little bit, safely, cautiously, but we uh, thank you for joining us from Toronto today. Thanks for having me, Jen. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, you've got a presentation coming up for our attendees in a few minutes, but as we always like to do, let's talk a little bit about uh, Avacana. And uh, I want to talk a bit about you as well with your history, and then we'll get into some of the things with your company. You've had a very busy 2021, but let's start with you, a little of your background and the company. Absolutely. Uh, so, so my background has been uh, working in the biotech or in the biopharmaceutical industry. Uh, in my early career, I worked as a management consultant, supporting a lot of these more uh, earlier stage biopharma companies. Uh, in 2015, we saw the opportunity emerging within the cannabis space, within the cannabis sector, especially and, you know, as a Toronto-based company, we saw that emergence um, and realized that there is already a, a substantial gap in the, in the medical approach, in the pharmaceutical approach, and the approach of providing evidence-based cannabis formulations or cannabis products to the medical community. And so we brought that biopharmaceutical perspective, way of thinking, R&D, clinical, preclinical, standardized medicine into into the industry very, very early on. Uh, so that's really been sort of a, a quick background into my my career and as, as to where, why Abicana has been positioned in that particular format. And, and your company, you've been around, as you mentioned, uh, since 16, five years. You guys continue to grow and expanding revenue into various markets and commercialization. Uh, talk a little bit about your team because you, you have gathered together a, a great collection of minds in a number of fields, and they have been with you for a long time. Tell us about the uh, Avocado team. Yeah, I think that's our biggest strength. Um, we, you know, the executive team and the senior team at all levels have been with us for a minimum of four years. You know, this, this is a combination of, of clinicians, uh, physicians, research scientists, R&D formulation scientists, management consultants, uh, marketing executives. You know, the, the, the team has been together. We've built the company ground up. We've evolved with the sector. And as you know, in this, this is, you know, the beginning of this industry and at a regulatory level is consistently evolving. So we've, we've become experts, you know, five years of, of leading a, a biopharmaceutical company that is operating at a multinational level makes you an expert considering that the industry is about five years old. So uh, the, the team has been key um, and, you know, we, we leverage off of the expertise we have and we stay true to, to that vision of providing evidence-based products to the medical community and patients. Uh, one of the things I've, I've noticed in interviews with you is you, you uh, and, and quite rightly so, are very proud of your uh, how you excel in partnerships. Uh, talk a bit about some of the partnerships you have, including a, a very big company here in Canada, Shoppers Drug Market. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, again, when we started off in 2015, 2016, we were the only company at the time, with the exception of, of course, pioneers such as GW Pharmaceuticals, that wanted to take that evidence-based approach. You know, everyone else was really focused on cultivation and growing more cannabis, which has in many ways commodified now. Um, so very early on, because we drew that line in the sand and we wanted to do real science, real evidence-based products, we were actually supported and surrounded by the top minds in Canada, essentially being part of the Mars Discovery District in Toronto. We started collaborations with the Faculty of Pharmacy of University of Toronto, some of the major medical and clinical institutions, including UHN, SickKids, and we were actually the first company and still the only company that's been part of a Johnson & Johnson incubator called JLabs. So that positioning and, you know, our commitment to real science has put us in partnerships with world-class medical academic institutions, but also large pharmaceutical companies, you know, in Asia and U.S. and Johnson & Johnson and some of the companies in South America. But also in Canada, from a commercial perspective, again, we're working with world-class companies such as Shoppers Drug Mart. So I think our positioning and our commitment to science has allowed us to really get get acquainted and get the support of major, major institutions globally. Uh, you have offices around the world, uh, expanded into South America, obviously, uh, uh, Ecuador, uh, Uruguay. Uh, talk a bit about uh, your time, which you just recently spent in, in uh, the lovely country of uh, Colombia. Uh, I loved hearing you talk a bit about just the environmental aspect of, of what you're doing in uh, an area along the coast, not not far from Bogota. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we started off again in 2016 as a drug development company. We started working on the products, and then we realized that we have an issue when it comes to the supply chain and the raw materials that are coming in. Because we weren't controlling that, we had a lot of concerns around the quality and the cost. So we decided to become vertically integrated two years into it or three years into the project. It wasn't that we started growing and then we decided to figure out what to do with the products. We started on the drugs, we started on the formulations and realized we should be vertically integrated. And at that point, even though we're Canadians and we live in Toronto, we 
could have found an LP or a licensed producer here or built one ground up, but we decided to actually cultivate in Colombia. So in South America, specifically in the region we're in, in Santa Marta, which is the, the Caribbean coast of Colombia, we have the most optimal climate physically possible for cultivating cannabis. It's 12 hours of sunlight all year round. The relative humidity level is optimal. It's very dry. It's the, we, we say as a joke, it's 360 sunny days a year. So it's always sunny. And because of the, the labor cost, water, land, and because of the optimal conditions where we don't need to supplement lighting, we don't need to supplement air conditioning, we are able to produce at a fraction of the cost. We're talking between, you know, five to 10 cents a gram. And we're able to produce not only at a fraction of the cost, but with substantially less environmental impact. Because again, we don't need to supplement electrical use and we don't have to add CO2, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, it's been an incredible experience to build that vertical integration in South America. Um, it, it has been fruitful. We, we exported to Chile this week from the raw materials. So we're, we're exporting raw materials into many countries, but we're also using those raw materials for our own products as well. One of the questions, uh, we were talking about this just before we, we went on the air. Uh, one of the questions I've, I've had to add into my uh, Q&A over the last 13 months is, of course, uh, COVID and the pandemic. How have you found uh, the challenges in terms of what you do? Traveling, as you said, you're tested all the time. Yeah. How has that added to the challenge of, of, of trying to oversee different areas around the world? Um, so, I mean, I've been I've traveled back to Colombia during the pandemic twice. So since uh, January 2020 till now, I've gone back and forth only twice. And the first time I went was November. And I can tell you, 2019, I had 187 flights. I went to Colombia every two weeks or I was in other parts of the world all the time. A lot of my senior team was going back and forth. And from the entire organization, which is not, roughly about 90 people today, I'm the only person that has traveled during the pandemic, you know, at, at least cross border wise. So it's substantially halted any type of real travel. Um, I mean, it's been great that we're getting better at using Zoom and Teams and all this stuff. But I, I, for me, I think it's very important to still have that in-person interaction from a manager perspective. And I've been lucky to have an incredible team that has allowed us to continue to execute without the need for travel. You know, so the team in South America has been strong enough to be able to, you know, not only commercialize medical products, but, you know, substantially progress pharmaceutical drugs manage supply chain verticals, the team in Canada independently is commercializing medical products, doing R&D. All of this was happening without travel, which I think is quite remarkable. And also, I, I guess it, you were saying earlier, just adults don't just make you stronger as you can find ways to pivot and adapt and alter. Yeah, and then we're, we're generally a, a, a relatively young team. I think the average age of the company is like 30 something. So we've been able to adapt. I think that's one of, one of our one of our traits. That's been the reason why we've been able to succeed in such a volatile industry that everything's just evolving and essentially being born. Uh, so that's been that's been helpful. But, you know, I, 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 I can't wait to get back to the point where, you know, we can travel and we can go meet people, especially in especially in South American big pharma partnerships and the projects we're working with. The culture there requires that level of, you know, human to human interaction. I think the team morale is always better in person. So I, I, I'm as much as I'm happy with what we've been able to accomplish, I think we're going to do substantially better once we're back in person again. We're talking uh, another small cap power discussion. We're talking with uh, Ras Zedian, CEO and co-founder of Avacana Inc. Um, Ras, I'm going to step off the, sta the stage, so to speak, and let you uh, do your presentation and I'll join you on the uh, other side uh, with a few more questions. So I'll hand things over to you right now. Take it away. Okay, well, thanks everyone for taking the time uh, to, to listen to the Avicana presentation. I will do a very summarized version of it, uh, probably about 15 minutes, and then we can leave it up for, to, to, to Jim and I to, to, to wrap it up. Um, as mentioned in our you know, Q&A or preliminary discussions, Avicana is a biopharmaceutical company. Our focus has been cannabinoid-based medical, pharmaceutical, and cosmetic drugs. Um, we are now in commercial stage in various markets, and the three categories that we're targeting are separated in their divisions and in their brands. Pura is our, our skincare line. It's a CBD, uh, hemp derived CBD skincare line cosmetics that has already completed clinical trials and is commercial. Roe is our medical line, CBD and THC, various delivery mechanisms, commercial in South America and here in Canada. And then we have our pharmaceutical and indication specific pipeline of drugs as well. As a macro summary, the company again is in commercial stage. Uh, we have developed a vertically integrated model with diversified income streams through various products. I've mentioned a few. We also are actually selling the raw materials that, are, that is coming from a vertical integration. 
Uh, we are multinational. The, the, the R&D clinical head office, all of that is here in Canada. Of course, we have commercialization efforts here in Canada, uh, but we also have a vertical integration, integrated supply chain system in Colombia, where we are also commercial as well. Uh, war cloth partnerships, Shoppers Drug Mart is to name one. From a scientific perspective, I think it's very important to acknowledge that we have established what we believe is one of the most industry-leading scientific platforms. This means all the intellectual property that is developed at by, by Avicana is owned by Avicana. This means all the formulations, all the, all the preclinical models, all the clinical infrastructure, all the analytical, bioanalytical, all that is owned actually by Avicana, and we've been working on it since 2015. Uh, this also means that the platform has demonstrated that it can commercialize products as we've had over 30 SKUs of products that we've now commercialized from that R&D platform. This, of course, includes support from world-class academic and clinical organizations, namely University of Toronto, UHN. And as mentioned earlier, we're part of the Johnson & Johnson incubator called J-Labs in the Mars Discovery District in Canada. As a, from a vertical integration perspective, uh, we are in Colombia, as mentioned, so we are cultivating in an organic and sustainable way. We are ranked the highest amongst the S&P Global Sustainability Index in 2020 amongst cannabis companies. So we take a very serious approach to corporate governance, but also to environmental sustainability, in which we are also controlling the cost and quality of our raw materials. So getting into the R&D, I think I've covered a lot of the macro, but just some major points here. All the, again, all the intellectual properties owned by us. Uh, we have 10 plus medical doctors and PhDs in the company that are part of the, the scientific and medical slash clinical platform. Um, we have attained recently, actually over the past year, about 10 government grants for our R&D and clinical programs, which is a, a very solid validation of, of you know, peer reviewed validation of the quality of the research that's being conducted. Um, from a Canadian perspective, we are working with the top of the top. We're talking University of Toronto, most important academic institution in the country. UHN, most important medical institution in the country, and we're working with many other major institutions such as University of Guelph. Uh, now we're working with some, several other major hospitals as well. Getting into the consumer products, Pura is our CBD hemp-derived skincare. These are functional skincare products that have actually been proven to have efficacy. So we develop these products in-house with Avicana's formulations. We're combining CBD with other natural excipients to, to have targeted benefits such as acne, eczema, uh, under eye, et cetera. And we've launched these products in Colombia, had a very good early success in, in a very small market. We're launching these products over the next few weeks in Canada, and over the next few months in the United States, UK, and other parts of South America. We believe Pura is positioned to be the leading CBD skincare line in the world, considering its advanced formulation, strong branding, but most importantly, the fact that we've completed human clinical trials. From our understanding, this is the only skincare line in the world with CBD that has, has actually completed human clinical trials. One study was focusing on, on endpoints related to acne. One study was focusing on endpoints related to eczema. And another one was actually focused on reducing fine lines and, and anti-aging. So this, again, this is a very successful project in which the, 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 the studies have been completed successfully from a safety and efficacy perspective. Our next line is Rofido. Rofido is our medical formulary. So we've taken our pharmaceutical drug development process and have actually commercialized a line of medical and pharmaceutical products under the medical cannabis system. These are the regulations that allows us to market these products with CBD and THC in various delivery forms, but we cannot call them indication specific. So these are not your pharmaceutical drugs that you get a prescription for. These are medical cannabis products, however, of pharmaceutical standards. And the way we treat these products is they're, they're helpful for symptom clusters or comorbidities that are prevalent in a number of clinical pathologies that range from dermatology, GI, psychiatric disorders, oncology, and pain. And these, this line has now been commercialized in Canada, and I'll expand on that. Before we get into this, it's very important to differentiate Ro as other medical cannabis products. Again, as a biopharma company, we've taken a biopharmaceutical approach, which means advanced drug delivery, preclinical. We've ensured these products are accurately dosed. They're manufactured in a standardized way and that they're designed for the patients to have a more pleasant experience, meaning that they actually taste better, they smell better, they don't look or feel like a cannabis product. And the early success in the commercial market has demonstrated that it has been very well adopted by the medical community and by patients. As a summary, Rofido is the most complete and consistent scientifically backed medical line within the cannabis market here in Canada and definitely in South America. The formulary is enrolled in a number of clinical trials as well. All the products are inhalation free. 
We're now in the process of commercializing these products among major hospitals here in Canada. Total about 20 SKUs, all with accurate dosing and again, inhalation free. And this is completely supported by the medical community and physicians and is one of the leading brands in Shoppers Drug Mart since its commercialization. So Shoppers Drug Mart is the largest pharmacy chain in Canada and is the first federally licensed pharmacy chain to be carrying medical cannabis in history. We're very proud to say that we're one of the leading brands there since launching the product lines. We now have a total of five SKUs. It'll be about seven in the next few weeks of, of the Roll Phyto products that are there. Uh, very, very excited about what we are going to accomplish with Shoppers. Very excited with the early success we've had so far. So important demographics is the fact that we've been able to successfully actually target the medical community and patients. If you look at the demographics, 53% of the sales have actually been to women. 73% of our sales have been to adults older than 31, which means we're actually targeting real patients and real wellness consumers for these products. And I've had already had over 400 physicians and over 15 clinics prescribe these products which means a very, very good proof of concept around the positioning, segmentation, and the targeting of these product lines for the medical community and patients alike. In parallel with that, we've decided that we're going to commercialize Royal Fido amongst the adult use market in Canada, which is a substantially larger market at around $3 billion. We realize within the adult use market, there is still a large number of consumers, patients that are buying products for wellness and medical purposes, However, they don't want to go through the process of attaining the medical documentation, which is necessary on the Shoppers Drug Mart side. Therefore, we, we decided to launch these products a few months ago, and we're currently in the process of getting the product listed and commercialized across seven provinces in Canada. Very excited about the potential of this. This is a substantially larger market, and we believe this will be a significant revenue driver for the company in 2021. Finally, we have also launched the medical line under the Royal Fido brand in South America. It's a complete comprehensive program there in which we're providing education, the advanced products which are industry leading in Canada, which makes them substantially ahead of anything else in South America, but also a patient support program to ensure that these consumers and patients are actually getting the right dosing, the right titration guidelines, and the right information to, from us and from the medical community. We are now expanding that across Colombia nationally, and we're expanding that into several other South American countries where we believe, again, the Royal Fido line will be the leading medical brand within the region. Our pharmaceutical pipeline is very important. And this has been a part of our story since inception. Uh, we work in three different categories, generic pharmaceuticals. So we're taking already registered pharmaceutical drugs and we're registering them in South America with substantially lower costs and which allows us to actually be very competitive in the market. We're also registering natural health products and phytotherapeutic drugs. And we're, we're in the process of doing that in several markets. And finally, we have our own rare diseases and pharmaceutical pipeline that are in various stages of clinical trials. Uh, our epidermal lysis bullosa, which is a rare disease and orphan drug uh, target, is in phase two. Our other drugs, one focus on inflammation and one focus on osteoarthritis, are in preclinical stage and proceeding into phase one. So we do have our pharmaceutical pipeline, but the way we have developed the business is for the, the cosmetic, medical, raw material business to make the company first profitable and sustainable in parallel with the pharmaceutical pipeline developing. A quick look at the, pharma, the clinical pipeline. The cosmetic trials are completed. Products are commercial. Real phyto products are commercial. And now we're conducting real world evidence studies on them since they're in the market. And then we have our pharmaceutical drugs that are in preclinical or in phase two clinical trials. A quick look at our supply chain. I know I'm running out of time, so I'll be quick here. This is a vertical integration. This is our cultivation infrastructure in Santa Marta, Colombia, where we are cultivating CBD, CBG, and THC. We're extracting it and isolating the cannabinoids. We've been successfully able to export into six countries so far, but really the supply chain business is designed to provide Avicana with its own raw materials for its own medical and pharmaceutical products. We're, as mentioned previously, this is a very low cost vertical integration. We have the capacity to produce about 30,000 kilograms of biomass a year under USDA organic and sustainable measures. Uh, so far about 30 plus harvest at about five cents a gram, which is a massive validation. We've seen a lot of large Canadian licensed producers go into Colombia and try to compete within the segment and have generally all failed and, and had to pull out. We've been successful in building the vertical integration, turn it into its own business unit, but also ensure that we have the supply chain in place for our global uh, commercialization of our products. Quick look at the financials. Uh, the company is still very, very tightly held with about 41 million shares issued to date. Uh, the company is held very closely with the management board, several institutions in Canada, United States, Brazil, a pharmaceutical company in China. Uh, we do have a broad range of shareholders, but again, very tightly held. 
We're often compared to other biopharmaceutical companies in Canada, where we generally are trading below their market caps. We're compared to Colombian cultivators that, in my opinion, do not have the pharmaceutical infrastructure or the finished products. And we're trading below the, the two that are mentioned here, market cap. So I believe that the company is still very undervalued. Uh, and it's because it's the length that it takes or the timeline that it takes for a company like us to actually come to the market. The exciting part is that we are now in the market and we expect to be reaching profitability status or EBITDA positive status this year. Uh, I won't bore you with bios. The entire team has been together since inception. There's obviously been additions to the executive management team, but here, the group that are mentioned here have been with us for a minimum of four years. They all come from professional walks of life. Um, I won't go through the bios of the board, but I can tell you as a senior TSX exchange company, we have an independent board of directors as well, and we take corporate governance very seriously. We're actually on the TSX as a senior company as an R&D issuer and not as a cannabis company. Major milestones, Q2 is going to be the, the most important revenue generating quarter for us as more and more of our products are commercializing. Um, we are commercializing Pura, Ro, Viola, and Replay in Canada. Several of those brands also outside of Canada. Q, in the second half of 2021, we expect some, of, some more progress on our clinical programs and our commercialization efforts. But really, the company is now built out from a regulatory perspective, de-risk, and we are in, in early stages of commercialization where we expect revenue to consistently increase. Major highlights, we believe it's de-risk, as I just mentioned, because we're commercial, we've attained regulatory approvals and milestones. We're diversified in the fact that we, while we don't do recreational products, we're focused on skincare, functional, medical, and pharma. Experience management team been together in this industry for the past few years. Intellectual property powerhouse, we own all the IP. Uh, our approach is absolutely disruptive to skincare, medical, and pharmaceutical. World class partnerships, as Jim, Jim mentioned earlier, and of course, vertical integration to ensure that we control our own destiny. And I'll wrap up there, Jim, if you want to come back uh, with any additional questions you may have. All right. Thanks, Aras. Hey, we should uh, we should mention as well uh, more information uh, after watching the presentation. Uh, it's abicana.com. Uh, it's Aras Azadian. Um, I'd like to, uh, if, could, could you provide a little more detail in terms of Canada and distribution for the uh, Pura Skin Care? I know that, and you know better than I, that that, that industry has just, the, the sales of that has exploded out over the last 20 years, while people are also getting smarter and wanting to make sure they know what they're buying. So talk about your product. Absolutely. So, I mean, one of the, one of the most important things is that we started working on topicals for two reasons. One is skin care, like the benefits of CBD for dermatology, whether it's atopic dermatitis, eczema, or even rare disease like EB. Um, and the, the second one is topicals for pain, you know, like your Voltaire and your, your osteoarthritis or your joint pain. So we developed both years ago of optimizing and taking them through trials, and we never imagined that we're going to be commercializing them in Canada, to be completely frank. But with Cannabis 2.0 and the recent uh, upgrades in the legislation, we were able to actually put more sophisticated products in the Canadian market. Because a year ago, all you can sell was flour and oil, all right? So now, where you can sell more advanced products, of course, the licensed producers that are focused on recreational products were excited to put out gummy bears and brownies and things like that, where Avicana was like was in a position where we said, wow, we can actually commercialize our sophisticated topicals. So our skincare line, Pura, is going to be launched with Shoppers Drug Mart on the medical channel, and it'll be available across adult use channels um, as early as the last week of April. So the product lines are going to be commercial, and it's going to be available through these two specific cannabis channels in the short term. We think the benefits of skin, of CBD, uh, you know, the non-psychoactive cannabinoid in skincare has tremendous opportunity and potential. There's no side effects. It's not like any of the steroids that there's other concerns. So we think there's massive potential there. Our other topical is a deep tissue gel for muscle and joint support and pain. That product was sold out within 10 days when we launched it. So it's, it's done exceptionally well. Um, and that product is again, a product that can help people with a lot of local pain, a lot of inflammation without the necessary, the risks of the adverse events that some of the other products that are topical uh, may have against steroids, et cetera. So very excited about the category. I think it's a very strong category for Abbey County. I just want to circle back quickly um, before we wrap things up, Aras, you mentioned Shoppers Drug Mart. Uh, their demo seems to fit perfectly with what you were just describing. Um, talk a bit about, uh, a little bit more about your relationship with them. Yeah, so we have an exclusive relationship with them in which on the medical channels, we can only sell our products with them. And I'm very happy with that because who else do I need when I have Shoppers Drug Mart? Uh, it's been an incredible learning experience with them. We work very closely together on, on so now supplying hospitals. Uh, we've, we've had every product line that we have available in Canada, they carry. 
you know, there's no SKU that Abby Canada produces that Shopper Jargon does not carry. So it's a, it's a, it's an incredible mutual respect amongst, you know, companies that are very like minded. They appreciate our, you know, efforts towards standardized medicine, accurate dosing, consistent supply, products that perform better, taste better, act better for patients. And we appreciate what they've done as the real, you know, the world's first real federal pharmacy chain carrying medical cannabis. So I think the success of Avicana with Shoppers Drug Mart is a massive strategic uh, uh, positive for us. And it's one that we aim to replicate in other markets outside of Canada. All right, so we'll let you have the final word. Any final thoughts before we wrap things up for our uh, guests watching today? Thank you for your time. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Jim. Uh, my last thoughts would be, you know, I think the industry is in very earlier stages still. And I think it's very, it's time, I've been calling for this for years, that there has to be a segmentation and a separation between an adult use company, adult use consumer, and a, a medical company, you know, and I think we're starting to see that separation now. And I think on the medical pharmaceutical side, uh, you know, we're, we're in preseason, you know, I've been adult use side, we're in the second or third inning, I think in the medical side, we're in preseason. So it's just getting started. We've established a, a very solid foundation platform to be one of the leaders within that side of the industry. And, and I really look forward to what we're going to accomplish in the near term. Uh, Aras, it's been uh, great talking with you today. I congratulate you on all the exciting things you're doing, and uh, I wish you continued safe travel. I know you've got to do it, and you're minimalizing it, but uh, I wish you continued success along with your team. Aras Azadian is the CEO and co-founder of Avicana uh, Inc. We should also mention, too, more information, as I mentioned earlier, uh, avicana.com. They keep their website well up to date, so you can find all the latest news, and obviously you can ask questions. There's a, a space for that today. So, Aras Azadian, thank you, sir, for joining us. Stay well, and we will talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Take care. You too. Hey, thanks to uh, Raf and Dakash and the rest of the Small Cap team for putting this all together. Don't forget to check out smallcappower.com. You can also check out our videos on YouTube. Thank you to all those who attended and joined us today. I'm Jim Gordon. We'll see you on the next edition of Small Cap Power Discussions. Have a great day.